In this video, we're going to look at a nice simple game I made called Wash Your Hands. It's a concept that's pretty relevant nowadays, so here I won't play through the game and go through an overview of how the game works. You can also play it for yourself on the website. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this last week, as I was dealing with these recent events, I came up with an idea and started working on this game. Now, one thing that I love about game development is creating systems with specific rules. If you've played my games, then you've certainly noticed that they are all very mechanically focused. So what I built here is a simple game where we have a nice level, and our goal is to contain and eliminate the spread. Now, needless to say, this game is obviously not medically accurate or medical advice, it's a very, very oversimplified simulation of how germs can spread. So first of all, if you'd like to play it for yourself before watching the rest of this video, then check the link in the description. It goes to a page where you can play the game, and below it you'll actually see links to the various systems and elements that I used to make this game that I covered in separate videos. So go ahead, play it for yourself, and come back here. Alright, so now that you're back, let's look at the game. Let's play through it and I'll do an overview of how it works. So here we are at the start of the game, I have my player character and I can just move around. Now as I always mention in my videos, it's very important to write clean code. Now the reason why I was able to make this pretty complex mini game in such a short amount of time is because I reused tons of systems that I made previously. Again check the game page linked in the description which contains links to all of the various systems. For example, the player movement was made in a previous video. The difference is since here I'm working in 3D, the character moves in the X and Z instead of the X and Y. So just one tiny change and I'm using the rest of that class. And since I'm using that class, I also have the dodge roll that we implement. So this move probably doesn't make any sense in this minigame, but still, I left it because it's just fun. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So again, here I am in this nice level, I can move around the map, and you can see there are essentially three areas. So there's this down here, this one here, and this one on the right. And then over here we have a bathroom with three sinks. So the workers are just doing their thing. So they go to a desk, like this one here, then they go to a bookshelf, they wait around, and they roam around randomly. So essentially they are moving around all over the place. Now the goal of the game is to contain the spread. So right now, as you can see, everyone is healthy. There are no germs anywhere, and all of the workers are perfectly healthy. And then down here, I can access my nice menu, and I can make someone sick by pressing a button. So click on this, and a random one, yep, there you go, that one has just become infected. Now, wherever he's going, he, you can see that he's spreading some germs. And now whenever someone goes through the area where that one has been, they also start to get sick. And after they spend a long time surrounded by germs, and they themselves also become sick, they become carriers, and they start spreading the germs. So there you go, now this one is starting to spread. So the infection started with just one worker, now there are two, and there's a bunch of infected areas, and now there are almost three, and so on and so on. Now as a player, we have two actions. Using the left mouse button, we can use a spray. So this one kills the germs, so as I spread around, I can clean up some areas. So doing so eliminates the germs on certain positions on the map. However, he is still sick, so he's still spreading the germs. So the other action that I have is approaching him and pressing the right mouse button. And there you go, I tell him to wash his hands, plays a nice cinematic, and there he goes onto the toilet, onto the sink, and starts washing his hands. Then once he's done washing the hands, you can look at the sprite, yep, you can see that now he's clean and no longer infected. So this is the core game loop at work. All of the systems work nicely together. So you can see how just by starting with a single sick worker, we can end up with everyone sick. So all of this started with just one, and there you go, lots of germs everywhere. Again, this game is obviously not medically accurate. Washing your hands won't actually cure any sickness, but still, this is an interesting way of seeing how washing your hands can help reduce the spread. Now, all of these systems working together might seem complex, but that complexity comes from combining some very simple rules. So looking at how the game was made, the first thing you've noticed is the visuals. Normally, I work strictly in 2D, but here I went with an interesting different approach, what I have here is a 3D world, so all of the meshes on the level, everything is 3D, but the characters are my normal 2D characters. So if I pause the game, so here I am in the scene view, and I can rotate the camera, and there you go, you can see the effect in action. So you can see the characters are all completely flat, and then the world is made up of nice, normal 3D objects. 
So in this case, for Milton 11, I use two Unity Snaps packs. I covered the Unity Snaps in a previous video. And the packs that I'm using here are the Office pack with these tables and computers and things. And then also the School pack with some chairs, papers, blackboards, and sinks. There's links in the description if you want to get these packs to play it for yourself. So we have our 2D characters working around in a 3D world. Now the other important element is the camera. In order to have this effect work, the most important thing is keeping the camera field of view very small. Now in a normal 3D game, you would use something like a 60 FOV. However, here, if I try to use a similar FOV, so let's put it at 60. But if you use that type of FOV in here, you can see there's a lot of distortion on all of the various sprites, especially when they are on the corner of the screen. So right there, that one definitely looks like a 2D sprite. So this can still look interesting, but I prefer to lower the FOV in order to reduce the distortion. By keeping the FOV small, you can see the sprites don't really stretch as much when they're on the edges. All right, so that's the camera effect. Then the last one is the depth of field effect. So you can see over here on the top of the screen, it's slightly blurred. This is just a basic post-processing effect that's included in the post-processing stack. So here it is, just a basic volume with a depth of field effect. Then there's the camera. As you can see, it is always following the player without using any rotation whatsoever. So the rotation is fixed looking down, it never changes. Now the follow, I'm using the Cinemachine virtual camera, and I also covered Cinemachine in a previous video. This is actually super simple. All I did was make this Cinemachine virtual camera, and you can see it has the follow following the player character controller, and with just a simple offset. And that's all you have to do, and it's a very nice simple camera. Now another part of the visuals are the workers. The sprites are randomly generated, so they are all pretty unique. This is pretty much the exact same code that I used when making Battle Royale Tycoon. So they have a random body, face, hair, beard, hair color, and skin color. I covered how this system works in the Modular Guest Sprite Sheets video, so go check it out. Also, on the workers, you can see if they're sick. So here, let me use the options to infect a random worker. Now let's look at that infected worker. Where is he? Yep, there you go. You can see he has some green things on top of him. And on the other ones, you can see they have nothing, so the sprites don't look normal. And this is also increasing, so as that one becomes more and more sick, you can start to see some green parts appear on top of him. Now this is handled through a very simple shader. So I have applied the same shader onto here, onto my player character. And here you can see on the shader, all it has is a simple texture that contains all of those green positions. And as I increase this value, you can see the green part showing up and starting to glow. So it goes up, lots of green germs, and as it goes down, it goes back to zero. So a very nice and pretty simple effect. I've covered a bunch of shader effects before, so check out the full playlist. Then over here on the UI, I'm showing some stats. So in here is the number of infected workers, then the number of areas with germs, and finally, this is the number of empty sinks available. So there you go, send this one to a sink, and it goes down from three to two, and clean up some areas, and that one goes down. All right, so that's the visuals for the game. Now let's check out the various systems. The germ spread is composed of two systems. There's the map and then the workers. The map is built using the grid system that I made quite a while ago. So yet another example of the power of writing clean code. When we made that class, we made it work with generics so we could use it with any object. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I can turn on gizmos and yep, just like that, you can visually see how the grid is located. So all these grid positions, this is how the map is set up. And again, I did the same thing that I did with the character controller. So just instead of having an XY grid, I just swapped it for an XZ grid. So one tiny change, and now I can use my nice grid system in a 3D world. Now each one of these grid positions holds an object that has a certain level of infection. So here is the code where we are instantiating a new grid, as well as a new grid object. So here is our grid object class. First, when you make our grid, we just have our lower left and upper right corners. Then we calculate the width and height in integers for our grid size. Then we instantiate our grid using our nice grid object. And then here our grid object pretty much just contains a float for the virus amount. Then a bunch of functions in order to add or remove that amount. Then there's the visual, which is handled by a particle system. Here it is. It's just some particles in a queue being spawned, moving around randomly and disappearing. So there's one of these particle systems spawned per each grid position. And then through code, we set our emission rate over time based on the virus amount on this grid object. So if that grid position has zero, then this one is set to zero and we have nothing. And if it is full, then we set it to a value and we have lots of particles just walking around. So here in the game, I can turn on some nice grid visuals. There you go. 
we have some nice debug visuals. So here we can see the internal values on each grid position. So let's locate one that is infected. And there you go. As he walks around, you can see that the value behind them is increasing. So wherever they go, they are spreading their germs. So like this one is infected. And as he moves, yep, there you go. He increases the position underneath him. And as the amount increases, so do the number of particles. So over here, one with 78, there go lots of particles. And here with under one, and there you go, just a tiny amount. Now the player has a special spray to clear the germs. And as I click, I can use it. And there you go. You can see the numbers constantly going down. So as I hit the areas that I hit, they go down. And as they go down, the particles also go down. So the visual disappears. So that's the mechanics. Let's look at how the spray works. So here it is. Now the first thing is we're working in 3D and not in 2D. Meaning that in order to get the spray position, we need to actually do a ray from the camera position. So that's what we're doing in here. We get the ray using the input mouse position. Then we do a ray cast and we do that ray cast, make sure that we hit on the floor layer. And after we collide, we can get the mouse position. Then here you can also see underneath the mouse that there is a nice indicator showing where the mouse is on the world position. So for here, as I go up, you can see that the mouse does not interact with the wall, but rather it just hits with the floor. So we take our mouse position and the player position, then we calculate a direction towards the mouse, and we use that in order to trigger our spray. Now the spray also has a nice particle system, so in here we're just setting the position, the rotation, and we're manually emitting some particles, whilst the input mouse button is down. Then here in our spray function, now this looks complex, but it's actually pretty simple. Again, the core of this system is based on the grid system. So what we're doing here is essentially just calculating a bunch of positions. We get those positions in a cone, so we apply some rotation to our basic spray direction. Then we take all of these positions and we convert them into grid positions. And then we simply reduce the virus on that grid position. So that's how the spray works in a nice cone. So there you go, I can walk around and clean up all of these areas. And you can see the debug with the numbers all going down, down, down. So that's how this works. So here is how the map germs are set up. We have a grid system behind it, then a grid object holding a simple value, and then based on that value, we have the particle system visuals. Then the sick workers increase the underlying map value, and the player spray reduces that value. All right, so now for the workers. They look pretty complex, but they're actually quite simple. The workers here are using the modular character system that I made in a previous video. Now in that video, I made a module that works with my custom pathfinding system, However, in here, I didn't want pathfinding to be limited to just grid positions. So instead of that custom pathfinding system, I'm using the Unity's NavMesh system. So I made a new model that works exactly with that. So here is a worker. And if you saw the modular character system video, then this looks familiar. So over here is the new module that I made using the move position pathfinding on the NavMesh. Then we have the basic move velocity, except this one just converted to use 3D. And then finally, the worker logic module that handles all of the various logic. Now, the nav mesh is very simple. So we can go open our navigation tab. And here we can see how our nav mesh is baked. It's just a basic Unity nav mesh. So it's baked and all of the walking positions. So it works pretty well. Now, the only thing that I made was make the toilet have a very high move cost. So this is so that the workers don't use the toilet as a shortcut, but rather go down here instead of through here. So to set it, I just set the areas, an area for the toilet, and put a very high move cost. So that's pretty much it, just a very basic nav mesh. And here is the pathfinding nav mesh move position script. And it's pretty simple to the pathfinding that I used in that video. So the only difference is instead of using my custom pathfinding, over here we're using the nav mesh. So go into the nav mesh, calculate a path, then it gets a path, and in here it simply follows that path. So it's pretty similar to what I use in modular care system, just using a different pathfinding system. Then we have the worker logic. So this one is also pretty simple. We just have a basic state machine. So it's similar to what I covered in the simple enemy AI video. All we have is a handful of states. So idle when he's waiting somewhere, moving when he's moving to an interaction point, then going to toilet when he's going there, then while he's washing his hands and just a general busy. So that's it, we have some very simple behavior. When he's idle, he counts down a timer and then sets a random move position. When he's moving, he's setting the move position using that other component. And then when he gets there, he decides what to do. And now the interesting thing is over here on the random move position. So this is set up in a very interesting way. Over here, looking at the map, we can see a bunch of interaction points. You can see all of them with this nice diamond icon. Now we have three types of interaction points. 
we have the desks over here in blue, so some desks here, desks here, desks here. Then we have in green the miscellaneous. So this one just looking at that bookshelf, looking at that plant, at these lockers, and so on. And then finally the yellow ones, which are the sinks. So they are all inside of this interaction points game object. And here we just have this script. So it goes through all of these children and fills up the list with all of the points. Now the points also have the type in a simple script, so just the basic enum, so desk, misc, and toilet. And all I did was manually place all of these game objects, I rotated them to face the correct direction, and that's pretty much it. So this is a very designer-friendly workflow. So then the worker simply requests to the interactions point handler, he asks for a specific type that is close to his position, and then he gets the interaction point where he's going to go to. So then he just swaps out the things. So if he's currently on a desk, then he's going to look for a miscellaneous. And if he's on a miscellaneous or a toilet, then he's going to look for a desk. So they're constantly bouncing back and forth between the two different types. So that's pretty much it for their logic for walking around. Now the worker also has a nice object down here. And again, pretty much all this does is just holds a simple value. So if the value is max, then he's sick and starts spreading. And the spread is handled by another class. So over here, the way that it's set up, we have a nice tick update. So I'm using the function periodic from the code monkey utilities. So this triggers this function every certain amount of time. So every 0.1 seconds, we're going to run this function. And then here, we're just going to do two things. First of all, add the virus on the position. So we go through all the workers and we add a certain amount right where the worker is standing, if the worker is infected. And then we go through the workers. We check if we have a virus where the worker is standing. And if so, then we add the virus amount onto the worker. So here it is in the game, and we can open up the debug view, so both for the map and for the workers. So there you go, that one has 100, so he's completely infected, and there you go, where he walks, he's spreading. And then these ones, as they walk over areas that are infected, you can see, yep, their number goes up. And as they go up, they start showing more and more of those green things, and as they go up to 100, then now they are infected. So now as this one moves, you can see that he's starting to infect that area. And as he moves away, yep, now he's spreading. So just like that, that's how the logic works. It's a pretty basic interaction, but it seems pretty complex since it's working with other systems. Now, finally, we have the action to tell a worker to wash his hands. So from the worker, it's very simple. He just gets an interaction point of type toilet, and then he goes there, plays an animation, and clears his germ amount. And on the player, first we check if there's a worker nearby. If so, then we show this nice visual. And when we right click, yep, there you go. We have a very nice cinematic. It plays an animation and there he goes in there. So this nice cinematic is made using another Cinemachine virtual camera. So we have the camera, we zoom in, play the animation and do a bunch of things. So it's a pretty nice, simple cinematic. And there you go. He goes in there, he does his thing, washes his hands. And when he goes out, yep, there you go. Now he's clean. So pretty much here, the goal of the game is to get all of the workers cleaned up and clean up on the air. So tell him to go, and then he goes, now that one is going to be clean, and meanwhile I'm clearing up these areas. So it's a nice simulation showing of how if they're always washing their hands and the virus is easily contained, but if you let it run wild like it is in here, then all of a sudden it becomes very, very difficult to get it under control. So right now with 500 areas infected and 23, yep, right now it's almost impossible to get back and take everything under control. Then here, if you're playing for yourself and you want to get to this point, then over here we have two buttons. Hard is the default mode, but I can turn it on easy, and that will slow down the rate of infection. So I can now go through and start clearing up things more easily, send them to wash their hands. And now with easy mode, it does become a bit more manageable. All right, so this is the mini game I made given current recent events. Now, obviously, this game isn't medical advice or even medically accurate. But still, one of the simplest things you can do is just wash your hands to prevent yourself from being sick or spreading germs onto others. So I really hope you enjoyed this nice little mini game and remember to stay safe during these difficult times. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.